Hi, so we're developing our games and one thing we want to do is bundle them up and package them off, probably online. You may be familiar with WebGL. Wasn't that fun? Hey, I love writing my shader code as text and uh, having basically no parsing options. I like that. Well, as you know, WebGL is based on OpenGL and OpenGL is no longer being actively supported. A lot of graphics APIs are moving to the next generation. In this case, the next generation equivalent of WebGL is called WebGPU. Now WebGPU, I believe, is basically a wrapper around Vulkan or something like Vulkan. Now the thing is, WebGL is based on OpenGL ES, OpenGL embedded system. It was like a different system for a different platform. But the thing with these modern next generation APIs is they're like scientific notation, okay? Scientific notation was developed for very small numbers and very big numbers. And these next generation graphics APIs are developed for very small systems and very large systems. The same system will work on both. So all of this info here is courtesy of Alain, Alain Galvin. So full credit, I'll be leaving links in the description. So to start with, for WebGPU, we need the Canary browser with flags. So, okay. So Google Chrome has a highly experimental version called Google Chrome Canary. You know, the Canary in the coal mine. So I'll just go ahead and download that. And we just go ahead and install it. Now, this will give us the most experimental kind of features of Google Chrome. <sighs> Oy, what happened there? Was what happened to the oh there we go. Canary's installed. Yeah, I wasn't sure why I, I'm not sure why that wasn't opening before, but now we have it. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go to Chrome. Flags. And this is where we can set anything that we want. And the flag that we want to set is unsafe web GPU. This is an experimental feature. Web GPU was released as of like last year 2021 so it's extremely new very exciting and what i'm going to do i'm not going to i'm not going to do a tutorial style that would take too long and i'm still getting my feet wet with this web gpu i'm not going to be following this rabbit hole down all the way at this point i've got enough on my plate but um if we just want to see a quick demo we can go to again alan galvin has this really really cool tutorial this example we can run this pen and yeah we have a triangle so what we can do is we can basically go through and clone this repo so we'll just open up terminal We can go ahead and build that. Hmm. Okay, so it's given some errors. Um, now we'll look at that in a second. I guess for now I'll open up VS Code in that folder and just have a quick look. So I've just looked through this super quickly. Uh, this is just a first impressions, kind of getting my feet wet sort of thing. So um, we have this index.html, it's a bit of styling, nothing too crazy, and it's this canvas I this canvas here is where the graphics are going to be inserted so we have this um, JavaScript file but as we can see if we look inside this source there is no main.javascript what we have instead is uh, main.typescript so webgl uh, web <laughs> GPU is all typescript and this gets um, compiled by node um, which is why we're playing around with npm so we have all of this sort of stuff, very, very uh, basic. We have this renderer object. Now this renderer object uh, loads in some shader code. We'll look at that in a second. But as you can see here, we have um, some buffer data. Okay, fair enough, some color data. And we have this class renderer. Now here we can see all of the kind of variables which are used by the renderer object. And it's very similar to Vulkan or metal 
or DirectX, I haven't played around with that much, but in the sense that we get um, very fine-grained control over everything. Um, so yeah, so we have this uh, canvas. So what this does is we're getting that element, that graphics, um, that graphics element, that div, that canvas, and we're passing that in, and that's our render target. And we have this render function. And what this does is we grab an image and then we render to it. So it's in this encode commands function. So then up in encode commands, we have pretty much everything. So we're setting up our color attachments, our you know depth stencil attachments, all of this stuff. This should be very similar to Metal or Vulkan. This is there's been a convergent evolution with Next Graphics APIs. They pretty much work in a very similar way because they're dealing with solving the same sorts of problems. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's all this. And like I said, I'll. This isn't my code, so it's not <laughs> not really my place to to claim it. But um, I'll be linking this now. If you're familiar with Vulkan, oh, sorry, if you're familiar with Metal, this sort of um, uh, attribute decorator, it should be very, very familiar. Um, yeah, this is actually very similar to the Swift code that Metal uses. Um, but yeah, as you can see, everything is possible. Like it's everything's marked out with attributes and things. And this code is um, like it has a fixed syntax. And anyway, I'm rambling. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I actually I set this up ahead of time. There are meant to be errors. Um, so the first thing we have is it says one high severity vulnerability. So we need to go NPM audit fix. And that fixes that. And then we go npm start. And it still gives, gives us an error. And the reason is that we are um, basically on the latest version of npm. OK, so what we want to do is we want to roll back to a more stable version of node version manager. There we have that. And we will go. Build that. OK, we have our server at localhost 8080. So like I said, this um, compiles that TypeScript down into JavaScript. And that gives us the beautiful triangle. <laughs> so like I said, just getting our feet wet, just be aware of this. Um, what I believe will probably be happening is um, engines like Unity can bounce code down to WebGL. And if we don't already have it, we'll have an option to bounce code down to WebGPU. That'll give us Vulkan-like performance or Metal-like performance, but in the web browser. There are, of course, other options like WebAssembly, but um, I just wanted to have a look at this super quickly because I think it's really cool. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. Hope you had fun, and I'll see you soon. Bye.